at the turn of the century was all too often the story of valor and violence seen through a hot haze of dust and gun smoke. But there was also another story, the story of a man whose deeds have largely gone unsung, though nonetheless heroic. A man who rode quietly in the vanguard of advancing civilization. Rex Allen stars as the Frontier Doctor. <laughs> This is an Apache. This is a settler. And this, this is the land. The land coveted by two widely divergent cultures, the Apaches and the white man's. Two peoples so far apart that neither believes they can exist in the presence of the other. And this is the result. Here's another result. Just one of far, far too many for a lone doctor to handle. Hello, Doc. You look exhausted. I am. What are you going to do about this situation? The Apache trouble? I don't know. I just don't know. I suppose I'll end up by calling for troops again. All right, the troops stay a while and go back. Then what? I know, I know, the same thing all over again. About like me prescribing a pill for a broken arm, isn't it? Look, Doc, you got no call to come busting in here and blaming me. Uh, listen, you got some new notion I ain't tried yet. You ever think of a truce? An armistice? Peace? Peace? <laughs> With them savages, you better stick to pushing pills than leave me to what you got in mind. Well, it seems to me that the Apache hurts just as bad when he's hurt, and dies just as dead when he's dead. It also seems to me that Chief Kaida may have himself a little problem just the same as yours, Mayor. I'm falling in your dust, Doc, but I don't see so good. I don't see how I can approach Chief Kaida with any peace talk. Before I had two words out, my scalp would be dripping blood in the moonlight. Let's see if we can't figure a way to keep you and your scalp in the same general location. For example, do you know a young Apache named Joe Fleetfoot? I heard of him. He the one who went to Carlisle, got himself educated? That's right. He's gonna marry the chief's daughter, and the chief likes him. Now, if I could have a little chat with Joe, and Joe talked it over with the chief, would you be willing to meet the chief and talk peace in some safe, neutral place? Maybe, Doc. Maybe I would. Only make that place awful neutral and awful safe. I know my hair's falling out, but I don't want to lose it all at once. I'll be back. <laughs> I sent a message to Joe Fleetfoot asking him to meet me here. In a manner of speaking, Joe had been my first patient long before I was a doctor. Back when we were kids in our early teens, I'd accidentally found him with his foot caught in a bear trap. When he saw me coming, a white boy, he took it for granted I was going to kill him. When instead I pried open the trap and bandaged his leg, he became my friend for life. Hello, Bill. You want to see me? Good to see you, Joe. It's been a long time, Bill. Joe, I want to talk to you about something. I suppose you know what it is. Sure. But I don't see how it'd do any good, Bill. Our peoples hate one another. You and I both know that. I don't see what can stop a war to the finish. The finish is right, Joe. They're going to send for the troops, and this time it'll be a massacre. The end of the whole Apache nation. And there's no answer. A truce is an answer. For as long as it lasts. It's a truce right now, before anything else happens. Well, who would you get to talk peace? I've already talked to Mayor Fletcher, and he's willing. If you could talk to Chief Kaida, he'd listen to you, wouldn't he, Joe? I'll talk to him. And I'll talk hard and long and strong. 
I know you will, Joe. must have talked very hard and long and strong because the next day I escorted Mayor Fletcher and Joe brought Chief Kaida to a neutral spot. The two leaders met and talked for the first time. All right, Chief. And if I do my best to sit on the hotheads and troublemakers in town, and we've got plenty of them, you'll agree to stamp on your hatchet, happy young braves? If this peace is broken, it will not be by an Apache. I have spoken. And so we had peace. It was shaky and uncertain, to be sure. Still, it was a lot better than none at all. But could it be made to last? Take a look, Frank. Take a good look. Indians walking around town like they owned it. That's what I'm going to see the sheriff about. An Apache, a dirty thieving crook. Yeah? Well, the sheriff ain't here right now, so I'm the deputy in charge. Make your complaint to me. Do you know a young Indian named Running Bear? Yeah, when I see him. What's he done? Swiped a pair of my boots. It was all muddy and dirty, and I left him out on the porch. New ones. Running bear, yeah, he's a bad one, just like the rest of his tribe. Did you see him take your boots? Well, no, I didn't rightly see him. But he was hanging around just before they disappeared. And you know Apaches. Hanging around, huh? Yeah. There's too many of them hanging around. I'd better go out and pick them up before the mayor puts in his two cents worth. You better wait for the sheriff. Sheriff? Huh! They didn't make me a deputy for nothing. Gotcha. Get a sheep. Chief, running bear around? The question must have a reason. Sure. He stole a pair of boots. I'm arresting him. I'm taking him in. Running bear was seen stealing? Well, no. I got no eyewitnesses. But I'm taking him in on suspicion. The Apache way is not the same. No man is a thief unless observed while stealing. Chief, you know what this says? This says I'm the law. And Running Bear goes back with me. The white man's law is for the white man. The Apache way is for the Apache. You may go back alone, in peace. I want Running Bear, and I want him here now. No! No! Go! Go now! I want him Trouble. Morningstar's been hurt, and the bleeding won't stop. Is your medicine man with her? Caesar's needle can do nothing. Will you come, Bill? Wait till I get my bag. Bill, it may be dangerous for you. Morningstar was hurt by a white man.
bring him here? Among his people, he is a medicine man. It may be that his medicine will help Morning Star. This man is white. And you trust him? He has my trust. You give trust to all whites. You want peace with them. White man comes today to this village, comes in safety. And now, You are our medicine man, Caesar's an eagle. You are our wise man. Do you have the medicine to make Morning Star well? Do you have the wisdom to make her well? Can it be that our medicine man has more hatred than wisdom? Can it be that he will let Morning Star die rather than have a white man examine her? You may try your medicine. Stops. Blood's dark and it comes in pulse beats. That means it's an artery, not a vein. I don't believe the artery's cut in two, just pierced. I think I can sew it back together. No, no! It's bleeding again! Trouble with a tourniquet. When you stop the blood circulation, it endangers the lower arm. It has to be released periodically. Hold that right like that. Can you operate here? Not here. I have to hold that wound clamped open so I can work on the artery. That means getting her back to my office and getting her there fast. No. Morning Star, stay here. My daughter would find death in the white man's village. Chief, that's the only way. I have spoken. See if you can get rid of them. Send, por favor. Joe, she's gonna die if we don't get her to town. Are you willing to help? Anything. I'll take the chief. You got no call to talk like that. You're still alive and still jabbering out your hate. Me and Chief Kaito made ourselves armistice, and I aim to preserve it. And there ain't any of you boys. It's Doc. Looks like he's got some Indians with him.
up on that tourniquet. Now loosen up on it a little. Success, but the patient died. But, but Bill, I thought you said. Well, I didn't mean it literally, Joe. But she's she's lost so much blood, and she's she's sinking fast. There's just one thing. It's brand new in the medical journals. So far, it's only theory. It's a method of replacing blood called transfusion. a piece of cotton with some of her fresh blood on it and that little knife. Roll your sleeve up. It'll be all right. Matt, you idiot! You want to start a war? I won't talk. Chief, all my warriors in big circle round your village. And I thought you wanted peace. I want peace. Your medicine man stole my daughter. My medicine man? Oh, you mean Bill Baxter, but, but I don't understand. Kaita give you till sun overhead to bring back my daughter. If she is with death, it is war. I have spoken. town surrounded. They'll massacre us. Yeah, I know, I know. Remember the doc just driving by in his buggy? Yeah, well, what about him? He had the chief's daughter with him, that's who he had. And if the chief doesn't get him back, well, you heard what he said. Me, I'm heading for the doc's house to find out what's what. Hank, you and Jeff scurry around town. I want every man able to walk to get his gun and get it loaded. The rest of you come with us. <laughs> We're going to try something that's never been done before, as far as I know. It's our only chance, and it's her only chance. You still have my trust, Bill. Thanks. I hope it's deserved. 
Now listen, you'll have to do just exactly as I say. Do you understand? Get her on the couch right now. That's it, Joe. You got the vein. You see any swelling under the skin? No. Good, that means the blood's flowing. We know you're in there, Doc. Come on, open up. We're taking that Indian girl out of there. Stall him, Joe. Tell him I need just 15 minutes, no more. Open up, Doc, before I break the door down. Matt, you got no call to destroy property without giving the doctor. Hello, Joe. We gotta take the chief's daughter back to him. It's that a war. You wait 15 minutes, not longer. I ain't giving you 15 seconds. We gotta take that girl back before the whole town's wiped out. Now, out of my way, Injun. No, you don't. Say, whose side are you on, Amos? All right, come on, try to get in the windows. Come on, let's break this door down. Gun in the medicine cabinet. Get it for me. Open up, Doc. You got no right to risk a whole town for one Indian. Matt, give me a minute. Just one minute. Hurry up, Doc. Open up, or I'll break the door down. Barricade themselves in the operating room. You tried to shoot me through the door. Doc, there's no use risking a whole town for one engine. Come on out. What do we do, Amos? Maybe some of the boys can get in the back door. Hello, Joe. Bill. Look. back to her dad in time. Get out of the way. Doc! We only got two minutes left before they're going to attack. to the wedding. You bet I will. I gotta hand it to you, and you know you're right. You don't listen to hotheads and old coots like me. Congratulations. Thank <laughs> you. 